Well, hi there, Scott Fitzgerald, 1360thesource.com. This is Yoga, the other 98%. Wilbur Shears uh, still in India, learning himself some more stuff. And uh, when he comes back, he's going to be even uh, further down that road of enlightenment and uh, and able to uh, to help you with whatever it is your spiritual goals have in mind. So uh, until he comes back, holding down the fort will be me and Yogani. And I don't know if that's well English. Is it Yogani and I, or Yogani and me, or me and Yogani, or you and me? And how does that work, Yogani? you got to turn the phone up. Is um, it up. Oh, there we are. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you now. Hi. It's good to be back. Good to have you back. It's good to have you back. So you don't have to answer my uh, my English question if you don't want. And so bottom line is it's the two of us against the world, Yogani. <laughs> or the two of us for the world, however you want to look at it. How about the two of us with the world? That'll work. That'll um, work. Well, uh, as, uh, as, as you know, we were a little short on time uh, last week, and I was wondering if it would be okay if we cover a couple of points on spinal breathing pranayama before we move on to Tantra. That would be absolutely fine. Um, Pick up some pieces. And for those who didn't hear the show last week, um, it is available in a recorded form on the advancedyogapractices.com website. If you just click on the upper right-hand corner on the uh, on the radio link, uh, you can listen to last week and the week before and the show from November as well. Um, but what I wanted to cover is uh, we talked about the simple procedure of spinal breathing, just uh, inhaling up from the perineum to the point between the eyebrows and then exhaling down from there back to the perineum again, uh, slow, deep breathing. And uh, it's a very simple technique. Uh, there's no strain, no fuss. But I did want to point out that this is, uh, at least in, in the system that we use in AYT, it's a preparation for meditation. Um, we don't use uh, pranayama breathing techniques as a standalone practice. We use uh, spinal breathing pranayama to prepare the nervous system for meditation. And that's a very important point. Um, if you consider the nervous system of the human body to be kind of like uh, an uncultivated field, if you will, okay. the, the soil, what, what spinal breathing does is it loosens up the soil. It, and, and anybody that's done slow, deep breathing knows that it's relaxing. And it's, in fact, it's, it's often recommended uh, by psychologists uh, as a as a stress reduction technique and that that relaxation is a loosening up of the nervous system a cultivating of the soil of the subtle nerves and so once we've done that for five or ten minutes and then we sit to meditate using the deep meditation practice that we discussed two weeks ago um, then uh, we're able to go much deeper without any effort at all because the nervous system has been been cultivated for it and, and so that's that's how it works. I want to make sure we made that point. There are some systems out there that use breathing techniques pretty much by themselves. Um, and uh, you can get a lot of relaxation that way, but over the long term, you won't be cultivating that inner silence the way you do in deep meditation. So it's kind of a one-two punch. One two punch. One of them is uh, for well, the the the, uh, the inner inner silence is is it more of a downward movement, and the uh, the in, you know that that uh, continuing uh, build up of that ecstasy is an upward movement. Is that right? Well, something sort like of. that. The 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 pranayama, uh, uh, besides uh, cultivating the nervous system for sustaining inner silence in meditation and also after meditation, it also does work on the ecstatic component. Uh, in the nervous system, as we talked about last week, uh, if you take a slight deprivation of, of uh, oxygen consumption, what it will do is it will create an upsurge from the pelvic region, and we're going to be talking about that later when we talk about tantra, uh, from more from the sexual ang angle. Okay. But it is correct; it does it does cultivate the ecstatic side, and then meditation cultivates inner silence through a mental technique. And between those two components, inner silence and ecstatic. Uh, energy, you have the dynamic duo, if you will, for <laughs> for uh, for creating enlightenment. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is someone had called in and asked about finding the spinal nerve uh, when doing spinal breathing pranayama, and I wanted to make the point that the spinal nerve, uh, in terms of experience when we're practicing, and then outside practice as we take the effects of. Uh, 
spinal breathing and meditation out into activity. It's not a fixed uh, ironclad location uh, in the body. And by that I mean when we do spinal breathing, we always stay into the center of the spinal uh, column and to the point between the eyebrows, back and forth between there and the, and the perineum and so forth. You know, we stay on that fairly narrow track or favor it, if you will. But the actual experience of the spinal nerve, it may start out to be very small, uh, thread-like, but as time goes on, uh, it expands energetically in our experience of what, what's going on inside our body. And uh, it can actually and does end up becoming a very, very large open inner space. In fact, the name of the pranayama book that, uh, that we have out is called Spinal Breathing Pranayama Journey to Inner Space. And so that's what we're talking about there as we cultivate the nervous system with this breathing technique and then combine it uh, with meditation afterwards. We begin to open up inside and we, we actually begin to experience our our internal uh, self, if you will, as a vast inner space. And the spinal nerve is the vehicle for that. So, And the spinal nerve isn't just inside of us, um, from what I understand. I mean, yes, it goes from your perineum up to that point in between your eyebrows, but then eventually there becomes a point where you can actually feel it going out past your head and, and beyond. Absolutely. Uh, and it and it also can expand and does expand infinitely in all directions. It's a very... Uh, paradoxical and uh, uh, how should we say marvelous experience because uh, it's associated with deep inner peace and uh, ecstasy and it all keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger but as we practice spinal breathing we're still following that that track the same track always we may be in the middle of a vast column of ecstatic energy but we're still following that same track uh, when we do spinal breathing so that was the other point. The spinal nerve actually um, has a very large uh, dimension to it as well as its very thin thread-like dimension. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is, is there are some enhancements to this technique in the spinal breathing book. And we mentioned briefly last week the full yogic breath. And uh, there are several other methods that can be used, very simple methods, to enhance the technique. So for anybody that's interested in pursuing it, they should pick up the little green book called Spinal Breathing Pranayama. Uh, and there are, there are enhancements in there. And there's also, obviously, a lot, a lot of other information about managing the practice over time and, and the experiences. And you can uh, order these and look for these at uh, advancedyogapractices.com. That's advancedyogapractices with an S at the end, dot com. 